and welcome to Allow Your Success Now. I'm Pat Dewar. The host of the show is George Caradini. George is a Allow Your Success Now expert. He is a, a law of attraction coach for uh, really serving people all over the country and in many occasions he's actually touched people around the world. George, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Pat. Glad to be here. I'm excited to be doing this and starting this new series. You call it the Mountain Chat series, is that correct? Mountain Chat, maybe Mountainside, kind of like Fireside, but coming to you from the mountains. I believe. Fireside. And I know that one of the things that you might notice is, no, we don't have the cameras on. You know why? Because the bandwidth doesn't always comply with mac matching up audio and video. This way, we get to just give you the good information and we don't have to worry whether our lips are in sync with our audio. So thanks for this new found technology. Um, George, I want to get into this this call and this, this show today and, and really get you talking a little bit more about um, kind of, I'd love to find out a little bit about how you got to allow your success now and then begin the process of when you're talking to a uh, a client or when you're working with somebody, how you get them started down the process, the questions you ask, the procedures you use. So do you want to give us a little intro? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Pat. The way I became involved with Allow Your Success Now or uh, George Caradini Coaching is about four years ago, I went to a workshop uh, in Dallas. I, was it Dallas or was it Allen or was it Plano? It's all the same thing here. When in, I, the, I, in the DFW area. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was in Richardson. If you're talking you about go. the one with David. And that's where we're headed. Very cool. All right, so about four years ago, I was in Richardson, Texas, invited by uh, the host here, Pat Dewar, to, uh, to attend a workshop that David Shermer, who was in the movie The Secret as one of the uh, coaches, and uh, he had a role in explaining some aspects about the law of attraction and he was giving a workshop in Richardson uh, regarding the law of attraction and how to use it in certain areas of your life and uh, one of the things that struck me about David uh, besides his heavy accent from Australia which I love listening to he shared his workbook with us and at the bottom of a, each page in the workbook there was a Bible verse well, this is the first time that I had seen somebody integrate or synthesize the law of attraction principles and, uh, and scripture or Christianity. And that intrigued me. So I, I paid close attention. I have a Christian background myself. And uh, I had been a viewer of the movie The Secret. And I had gotten myself on many uh, email lists and was studying it intently to see how I could use the law of attraction to help me in uh, my career. So as I'm studying the law of attraction, and I, I was trying to synthesize it with my Christian faith as well, so here's David with his workbook uh, teaching law of attraction, but on the bottom of each page was a verse. And uh, I had the opportunity to, to meet him over lunch. He, his wife Lorna, uh, Patrick, and several others, and I, went out to lunch and so here we are over barbecue talking about the movie The Secret, talking about the law of attraction and talking about our faith. So one thing led to another and um, I started receiving emails from David and I believe one of the emails that I received was an interview that he had with a, a woman named Laurel Langemeyer and Laurel, Laurel herself was on the movie The Secret as well and uh, now I'm on Laurel's mailing list. And one of the first mailing lists, or one of the first emails that I received, was an invitation to um, become part of the Quantum Success Coaching Academy, or the QSCA, uh, which was being run by, and still is run by, Christy Whitman, who is now a New York Times bestseller. And I asked my wife, which coaching program should I pursue? I always do continuing education each year as part of my professional development, personal development. And my wife saw that this was a coaching program that was available and said, you know, I've always been a coach. 
So why don't I go in that direction and learn more about the law of attraction or, or words to that effect. So I enrolled in Christy Whitman's Quantum Success Coaching Academy. There's more information about that on my website, which is allowyoursuccessnow.com. And you'll see on the sidebar, there's a place where you can opt in just to receive a few uh, audios. Uh, if you go to any other page, you'll see a sidebar where there's a triangle, and that's Christy Whitman's information. Click on that, you'll find out more about the Academy. But meanwhile, as I was going through the Academy, one of the homework assignments was to, um, to meet our future self and meet ourselves in the future and to uh, talk to our future self. And in that exercise that my friend Terry Self led me in, I gave myself the word allow, not fully realizing the significance of allow at that point. Um, but the law of allowing happens to be one of the universal laws. It also struck a chord with me, Pat, because allowing or not allowing or resistance is one of the main reasons why people don't see the success in their lives that they'd like to see. I'd even take it further and say that a lot of times people will um, bat it away. If you ever been around somebody you say, hey, you know, you look great today, and the first thing they do is they, you know, you've tossed this warm fuzzy in their direction, and they pull out their kind of spiritual tennis racket and they bat the thing over the fence. And, oh, this whole thing? I only put this on when I care what I look like. That we don't allow ourselves to receive even something as simple as, you look great today. And that tendency inhibits us from receiving so much more. Haven't you seen that as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and a lot of it has to do with how we view ourselves and our own personal acceptance or self-acceptance of ourselves. And so as I pursued learning more about allowing, I... Um, I don't want to say inadvertently because I believe I attracted it now that I know more about the law of attraction, but I came across Joe Vitale's information. And Joe Vitale, or Dr. Joe Vitale, he has many, many books. Uh, but one of the books that I looked at was The Attractor Factor. And The Attractor Factor had a five-step plan, or five steps, on how to attract whatever you want, or how to create whatever you want. I thought that was interesting. And so, Pat, I think I may have even shared a handout with you that talks about the five steps. I think the first step is uh, figure out what you don't want. And once you figure out what you don't want, that's a great starting point because, surprisingly enough, most people don't, e don't even know why they're not walking um, in the success that they expect. They don't even realize that they're, they're out of alignment. And that's a use law of attraction terms and spiritual terms. Basically, people are walking around in their quiet discontent, and they don't even know what they're not content about. So one of the things I do is help people figure out, well, what is it that you don't want? Pick something. And once they pick something, then we turn that around into something they want to create instead. And the most simplest, most common is finances. So if somebody says, well, I don't want debt, we turn that around into what they do want. And what they do want can't be no debt. It needs to be abundance or financial independence or uh, some other, something that they create, not something that they eliminate. So we take debt, turn it around into abundance. Then the third step is to get clear of any limiting beliefs or any um, doubts or any of the self-talk that we oftentimes use that says, you know what, others may deserve it, but not me. Others can do it, but not me. Or who am I to think that I can do that? Well, once we know that we have limiting beliefs, and we all do to some extent, there are many different processes, many different exercises uh, that we can use to help people eliminate those limiting, limiting beliefs. Now, once these limiting beliefs are, are gone or, or minimized, the fourth step is to put ourselves in the feeling place of what it feels like to have, be, or do 
excuse me, and had an incoming phone call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's real Technology, here. man. <laughs> hey, hey, we're live. You know, this is not uh, this is not canned in the studio. <laughs> it's, so, it's all good. So anyway, um, the fourth step is for us to imagine ourselves in that position of having, being, or doing was it what it is we said we wanted in the second step. And once we hold that feeling or get that feeling, we hold that feeling for at least 60, 70 seconds. And we just resonate with that feeling. Just hold that feeling, feel it, experience it in, in as much vivid detail as possible. And then we release the feeling in the fifth step. And the fifth step is release the feeling, believing that what it is we want is on its way. And when we do that, when we step out in faith, so to speak, oftentimes we're going to receive some kind of inspired thought. Maybe somebody's face will come to mind, or we'll remember that there was a phone call that we wanted to make, or that we had an unfinished project that all of a sudden now we know the answer to. Whatever inspiration we receive at that point, act on it. Because when you act on it, that's when you start involving the uh, the spiritual power that exists in the world that's much bigger than ourselves. That's when the out of the blue stories start happening. That's when the miracles start happening. So that's inspired action. So the five steps to review are figure out what you don't want, turn it around into what you do want, get clear of any limiting beliefs, put yourself in the feeling place of having, being, or doing what it is that you said you wanted, and then release that feeling, believing that it's on its way, and take inspired action when the inspiration comes. It's just like driving, say, from New York to California. We don't have to know what the weather is in Denver when we're still in New Jersey. We just need to know what's in front of us in New Jersey as we're driving, then over to Pennsylvania, then Ohio, then Indiana, Illinois, so on and so forth. We don't have to know the final destination and all the steps. We need to know the destination, but we don't need to know all the steps along the way. We just need to know the next step. And when we take the next step, then we get the next one after that. We take that, then we get the next one after that. And that's how I encourage my clients to live their lives. One of the things that I, I see here on this, you know, on the, the five, release or clear out any resistance, doubt, or limiting beliefs. And again, I've worked with folks in the past in, in other realms kinda you know the reason why we were where we were at a few years ago with David's thing and I, and I look at this and I think you know the biggest challenge was to get people to buy the truth in a sense to that that old song the voice of truth to hear that they're free to hear or believe and and move through the resistance and the doubt. I mean, it's that that old cry of you know, uh, help my unbelief. Exactly. Okay. And exactly. and not even. And sometimes we don't we don't realize that we got limiting beliefs. But even when we do realize that we're like, yeah, but I I don't know how to get over that hurdle. Are there? I know you got lots of tools, and you know you've worked with me a few times in the past several times actually and just the other day you did a, a wonderful thing in uh, in giving me a little quick direction um, anything you'd want to say just to help somebody begin that breakthrough process of, of what I call purchasing the truth receiving that truth sure Pat the um, and it was my pleasure to, to work with you yesterday on that other issue and oftentimes, I'm not even sharing something that somebody doesn't already know, but maybe they know it in their head but not in their heart. And, and somehow the way I say it or the way it's shared with them, they start to get it. And when they get it, everything changes. And so to give you an example, if you were to look at, at uh, a spectrum of emotions, the top or the highest emotion is love. The exact opposite of love most people would say is is hatred and that's not true. The opposite of love is fear. That's right. The opposite of love is fear because love is expansive. Marshi Shymoff talks about this in her book Happy for No Reason and she learned that she 
was happy for no reason. And when we start happy, we finish happy. And a lot of good things happen in between. So when we're happy for no reason, one of the things that is easier for us to do is to experience love. And love is expansive. Love connects us to each other. Love is what binds us to each other. Love is what connects us to God. God is love. And the well, opposite of love is fear. Fear is, a fear type thought would be, I'm not good enough. Or who am I to think that I deserve that? Or I don't deserve that. Those are really fear-based, and the reason why they're fear-based is because we've trained ourselves not to hope for good things, because so far up to now, in our, in our experience, we haven't seen the things or all the things that we wanted. So we think, oh, that's not for me then. And that's just not true. God's love is for everyone. Everyone. If you can hear this right now, God's love is for you. Well, you know, you say something really uh, awesome there. When you're talking about love and the opposite being fear, I've seen it put on a scale where if you were to, to, to measure or think of a scale between acceptance and rejection, where rejection is the highest, what's the feeling you have? Rejection, highest, you're afraid. Where acceptance is the highest, you're in a love bubble. Exactly. You're you're loved. You feel loved. You know. So when you you know, I, I hear you allow your success now. It's it's a, literally allowing yourself to accept who you are. Exactly. Where you are. And one of the other beautiful things about your your process is that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right then. And have you ever had the feeling where you just felt like you were behind in your sure. in your transition, so to speak? Yeah. You know, I mean, early in I know in my life I I was like Luther or something, you know. I mean, I was the guy that 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 you know had to do everything to try to earn God's love, and and it was so amazing. And I know you've had this experience. The day you're sitting there holding your your child, your son or your daughter, and, and you're looking down and going, "Whoa, this is my son or this is my daughter. This is this is the creation I get to be for all of their life." I'm more for this child than they could ever be. Or at least at that point. Yeah, yeah. At, 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 at that point, you know, what did they do to inherit all of that forness, so to speak, being for them? Love, accepting. Exactly. What did they do? They showed up. They were so, exactly where they were supposed to be. And I love that you have that all the way through it. Even when you're, you know, working your way through the process, there's never a point in what I hear where you're behind the eight ball and you're not on top of the game. You're just where you're, where you're even where if you're starting right now, figure out what you don't want. That's beautiful because it, it, so often we say, what do we want? Um, the world. Okay, well, that's a little large. You know, why don't we start with something you can identify? Put your finger on what you don't want. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be you know, unloved. I don't want to be single. I don't want to be, right? Sure. And oftentimes, though, Pat, it's a real big jump to go from from fear-based emotions, you know, despair, powerlessness, anger, uh, jealousy, rage, envy, um, hatred. It's hard to jump from there right up to love. So what I introduce my clients to is, is a five-step program or a five-step process that I guide them through. I don't tell them up front what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's, a, it, it's taking the word allow and making it into an acronym. So the word allow has the letter A. And so the letter A I use as a reminder for appreciation. One of the fastest ways to change our view on life and to change our, our emotional set point is to become a thankful person. If we look in scripture, we're told, you know, enter into his courts with thanks, enter into his 
uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Right? We're told to be thankful in all things. You know, we're told to rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. We're told these things over and over. Not because God is some tyrant that wants to give us misery that we just have to be thankful for. What it's for is when we learn to be thankful in the present moment. That's the fastest way to get out of that moment. Because until we become thankful, we're not going to receive things to be thankful for. Because the mystery of the law of attraction is that when I feel thankfulness, when I feel appreciation, I receive back to me more things to be thankful for. When I don't feel thankfulness, when I, when I feel, you know, disgust or it's not good enough or, you know, lack, I'm going to keep on receiving more and more of that instead. So the fastest way to get up to appreciation, um, I'm kind of going to leave you hanging here because I want to talk about that next week when we get together again. But there's a simple way to start getting into an appreciative mode. I'll share one of them with you right now. It's just to be thankful for three things a day. Take out a piece of paper and write across the top, today I am thankful for, and write down three things that you're thankful for. Just three. Not volumes, not a Wikipedia, not an encyclopedia or a dictionary full. Just three things that you're thankful for. And then tomorrow, write three other things, three different things. Do this exercise for 21 days and you've built a habit but you've also trained yourself to see more and more things to be thankful for. So in my five-letter acronym allow, the first one is appreciation. And Pat, I think that's a good place to wrap up now because we've got plenty more times to talk about and plenty, plenty more examples to share on how we can start allowing in our lives. I agree. I think one of the things that you want to do, though, too, is if people have questions, how can they send a question to you? George. Absolutely. Thank you so much for mentioning that. The easiest way would be to go on to allowyoursuccessnow.com and I'd like to give a shout out to a friend of mine named Jeff who actually arranged for me to have the uh, domain loa.guru so loa.guru g-u-r-u when you type in loa.guru, it will send you directly to allowyoursuccessnow.com. Once you're there, go over to the testimonial page. Look at a few of the testimonies, a few of the comments, and if you have a question for me, leave me a comment. Before the comments actually get posted, I moderate them, I look at them, and if you have a question for me, I'll see it, and it will be private. I don't publish anything that somebody doesn't want published. So if you have a question for me, just put it in the comment section and um, I will contact you. Also, they'll leave your email address for me in the comment section and I'll be able to email you an answer. The other thing that you can do is um, you can, well, I'll hold off on my phone number for right now. I think there'll be time for that, but, but not in this first introductory one. Otherwise, I won't get any work done. Yeah, no worries. The other thing is, is that People can, um, uh, they'll, they'll be able to view, listen to these shows in the future. Absolutely. We'll post these on your, on your YouTube channel, probably embed them in your website. Um, oh, yes, and by the way, Pat, I'm sorry, the, the YouTube channel happens to be Allow Your Success Now. So go to the YouTube channel, and you'll see other YouTubes about this and other topics. Leave a comment. If you have a question, I, like I said, I read the comments and questions. Those are not moderated, so if you have something private, I, I prefer that you, you would contact me uh, on the website. The other way you can do it is shoot me an email, and my email address is george at loa.guru, and uh, when I receive your email, I'll answer you. That's outstanding. I, like I say, folks, it, this uh, Allow Your Success Now broadcast, we're using Hangouts because, honestly, Google loves its toys and is great to use their toys and uh, so that people can chime in, they can connect with George, and they can begin the process. I'm in a noisy environment, so I'll probably need to sign off. Uh, this is Pat Dewar. I host the TV show The Business Spotlight in the DFW area, and 
uh, out there on YouTube and other places. George, any last words for today? Absolutely. If you're interested in finding out more, I also have an upcoming book called Allow Your Success Now, Five Simple Steps to Drop Your Bags and Start Your Journey. And Pat, I also did a four-hour workshop on Allow Your Success Now and those five steps, and that's available soon as well. So, in fact, the DVDs are at the printer, and um, we'll pretty soon make that available as a product to be uh, purchased. Um, the, the other thing I want to encourage people to do is listen, watch for more of these Hangouts. These uh, will be able to teach you some of the major tools of transforming your life. Now, you have a Law of Attraction group in the uh, Oklahoma City area, is that correct, or in Tulsa area? Uh, in Tulsa on Tuesday Tulsa. nights. Well, actually, on when, every single Wednesday at the uh, Barnes & Noble at 71st and Memorial. We get together at 645 until about 830. Uh, we share successes. We share wins. And then I also discuss uh, more information about the Law of Attraction and other universal laws that we're using to to live in alignment with who we really are and live the lives we really want to live. Um, and, so just and check us out in meetup.com. Meetup.com, and that's in Tulsa. The other thing is is that we'd like these to be able to be expanded out where more people around the country, maybe even around the world, can chat in, ask questions, get involved in the Law of Attraction, can I say, Hangout? That yeah, uh, we'll is create, from yeah, the Allow creating. Your Success Now broadcast. Absolutely. My goal is to have this online and to, to turn this into uh, eventually uh, a teleseminar where you're able to uh, be part of having your specific questions answered, your specific situations addressed, almost in a group, group coaching type environment. That is outstanding. Thank you so much, George. As always, it's an honor and a pleasure, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, my friend. Have a good evening, Pat.